Hello friends, this is Satish Nikam from MAP's KBT College of Engineering, Nasik. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the XPL connection to 8051 microcontroller. Uh, this is a very important part because uh, when we have to use the IC8051 microcontroller, the first thing you have to apply VCC and ground. The second part which is again very important, you have to connect the clock pulse to the 8051 microcontroller. It is the heart of your system. So, how to connect it that part we are going to discuss in this lecture. So, as I told you, uh, the heart of the 8051 is the circuitry that generates the clock pulses by which all the internal operations are synchronized. As I told you, whatever may be the different, different block present in the 8051 hardware, uh, they are all digital uh, systems and uh, they are supposed to be synchronously operate and to make it synchronous, uh, we have to connect the clock frequency. Uh, this we can do by two different ways. First one, using a quartz crystal oscillator. Uh, crystal oscillator as in the uh, block diagram part we have discussed, it is a quartz crystal and quartz is having a property. Uh, when we apply a particular voltage, it will generate a, a frequency and that frequency we are going to apply and uh, whatever may be the frequency is there, it is depend upon the size of that quartz crystal. Means specific mechanical design is there and a specific size and shape we are going to design so that it will give you uh, the frequency. What is the frequency that we required for 805 microcontroller? Yesterday I told, I, I have told you already. 11.0592 Very good, very good, very correct answer. It is 11.0592 megahertz. This is the frequency which we required for our 8051 microcontroller. What, why it is so specific that part we will discuss in serial communication. But remember here, this is the frequency which we required and which is generated by the crystal oscillator. And that crystal oscillator, uh, we can connect uh, pin number 18 and 19. So, this, this is the connection. See. Uh, pin number 19, pin number 18, XTAL1 is my pin number 19, XTAL2 is my pin number 20. Now, this, this portion, this portion is actually the crystal oscillator. This uh, P, uh, capacitor C2 and C1, 33 picofarad capacitors we are going to connect. Why we use this capacitor? See, capacitors are used as a filter. Whatever may be the clock frequency which we are getting, that is supposed to be uh, very specific. So, uh, if any noise is there, that is supposed to be filtered out. And for that purpose, we are using these two capacitors C1 and C2 and having value uh, 33 picofarad. And we can connect it uh, to the pin number 18 and 19 and another terminal of that capacitor, it is get connected to the ground. So, this way we can have a crystal frequency. If you want to see the 11 point uh, 0592 megahertz, you can check that frequency on pin number 18. From that particular pin, if you take the output and if you check on the CRO, you will uh, you can see the frequency here that is 11.0592 megahertz on your CRO. So, that way you can check. This is one option by using quartz crystal, you can apply the frequency for your 8051 microcontroller. Second option is, uh, this is uh, this is the figure which we got from the book of Kenneth Island. Next part, here uh, now we are having suppose a, a function generator or the oscillator signals we are having. We can generate in our lab the uh, particular frequency by using function generator. If you are having that provision, you can apply here on pin number uh, 90 that is XTAL1. So, another option is there by using transistor transistor logic oscillator circuit. If you have externally designed that circuit and you generate a uh, frequency, that frequency you can apply on pin number 19. XTAL2 pin is not connected in that case, that is again very important part. Next, here. Now, uh, first thing, the minimum reference which we are having, that is our clock frequency. Means, whatever may be the pulse which is generated. So, this is my pulse, one pulse if I say P1, this is my pulse, this is my main reference for the operation of 8051 microcontroller. But when we go for the execution of the instruction set, uh, the length of the instruction set is there. There are different, different operations when we execute the instruction set. First, uh, we have to pick up the code of an instruction, that is the first part from the ROM, the code it is get pick up. Then that code it is get decoded. 
after that when the decoding part it is get over uh, microcontroller is going to execute that uh, code so these are the three steps or we can say the three stages are there uh, in which the instruction it is get executed and for that purpose uh, it is not supposed to be happen in a single clock and for that uh, for that purpose uh, we required here uh, total uh, 12 clock pulses we make a group of 12 clock pulses and that group of 12 clock pulses we call it as a one machine cycle maximum instructions of 8051 microcontrollers get executed in one machine cycle there are some instructions which get executed in two machine cycles also there are some instructions which get executed in three which required the three machine cycles or four machine cycles it depends upon that instruction but remember this is the reference one uh, machine cycle is the reference for the execution of different different instructions of your 8051 microcontroller uh, two clock pulses becomes one state and six states becomes one machine cycle or we can say simply you have to remember here i will suggest you uh, in one machine cycle we are having 12 clock pulses now what is the use of that machine cycle uh, what is the use of that clock pulse uh, can i change the frequency uh, there are different different questions correct now what will happen if we change the frequency can we change the frequency of 8051 microcontroller yes we can change the frequency even my p89 v51 rd2 microcontroller can operate on 40 megahertz i told you that we required 11.0592 megahertz frequency but my microcontroller can operate the internal hardware is designed so that uh, my philips ic p89 v51 rd2 can work on 40 megahertz so what will be the benefit of it can you calculate here the time period for one machine cycle if the frequency it is given how many clock pulses are there in one machine cycle 12 12 very good 12 12 12 not 2 in in one state we are having two clock pulses and in one machine cycle we are having six states means total 12 clock pulses 12 clock pulses are going to prepare one machine cycle okay now this is the frequency 11.0592 megahertz is the frequency for your clock pulses which you are going to apply so what will be the frequency of machine cycle can you calculate it in one machine cycle we are having 12 clock pulses so definitely the frequency of machine cycle it is get reduced so to make it reduce how many clock pulses are there in one machine cycle so it is 12 clock pulses so we will divide this by 12 so 11.0592 megahertz divided by 12 we got the frequency here 921.6 kilohertz huh? remember it is kilohertz and if we know the frequency can i calculate the time period for it uh, one divided by frequency we got the time period for machine cycle and that we got 1.085 microsecond so when we use the crystal frequency 11.0592 megahertz and i will get the machine cycle time period it is 1.085 microsecond this is the time period which is required for your microcontroller if the frequency is 11.0592 megahertz and the instruction is supposed to be executed in uh, in one machine cycle this is the time period now suppose i increase the frequency my frequency if i consider it as 16 megahertz if i use the frequency 16 megahertz so what will happen i can calculate here the uh, machine cycle frequency is equal to 0.75 microsecond means if we increase the frequency my machine cycle time period it is get decrease now in the previous case of it uh, 11.0592 megahertz Uh, to get uh, to execute a instruction in one machine cycle it takes 1.085 microsecond but here if we increase the frequency uh, to 16 megahertz uh, my time period suddenly get decrease and it it is now only 0.75 microsecond to execute a instruction which is supposed to be executed in one machine cycle as we go on increasing the crystal frequency uh my time period it is go on decreasing for the execution of my program or for the execution of my instruction uh and so we ideally we think the uh, maximum frequency it is supposed to be applied for the microcontroller but there are limitations of the hardware when i use a hardware uh you have to go through the data sheet of that hardware when a particular ic you select you go to that uh, data sheet of that ic and you can check Uh, in a particular frequency it is supposed to be operate uh, lower than that frequency definitely it will not work and higher than a particular frequency it will not work 
So, you have to check the data sheet uh, in which frequency it is supposed to be operated. But as I told you, when you are going to have serial communication of your 8051 microcontroller with another devices, you have to use the crystal frequency which is very specific 11.0592 megahertz. This is all about the interfacing of crystal oscillator to 8051 microcontroller. We will meet again in the next lecture. Thank you.